So I'm here in New Zealand now, commissioning the uh, project that I've been working on since March of this year. And what it is, is uh, an ion source which generates the particles used in the particle accelerator industry. And it, it's sitting in this, uh, it's hard to see there, this big box. And uh, you can get into this box here. It's a cage to protect the uh, users from the high voltage that goes in here. And then just to put the camera down for a sec to open the door. Now we're inside. So this device here, this is the ion source which is essentially just a can. Sorry for the bouncy camera. It's an empty can in here with magnets inside it and on the back plate here is a filament. These heavy cables here, they look like welding cables, they can carry up to 400 amps. And that's the amount of current required to light up the filament inside here. This is all in a vacuum and uh, they heat up the back here with the filament and then they pump in a little bit of hydrogen gas and the heat and the voltages in here and the magnetic field um, breaks apart the hydrogen gas into hydrogen molecules, adds an electron to each hydrogen molecule and then it accelerates it out through these things here which are two rings inside this plastic insulator and the rings have little holes in the center and, and the, uh, the ions, the charged particles fly out through the holes and then they get accelerated and used for various purposes. When I talk about the ex particle accelerator industry, you're probably thinking of CERN, the one, the big uh, research facility with the 21 kilometer uh, acceleration loop. Well, that's one small aspect of the particle accelerator industry. Most of the uh, particle accelerator industry is for making electronic parts, making this, the chips, uh, doping the silicon to make it P or N doped silicon or implanting uh, materials on the backside of a piece of glass to make the touch screens for your smartphone. And that's largely what the particle accelerator industry is about. So it, it affects all of our lives. It's also used in the medical industry to, for radiating um, people's tumors in their bodies. But this is where it all starts, in a device like this. This is called an ion source. The company I work for designs these things, but they've never actually run one. And so this facility here is being put together to uh, run this. Um, more of what's going on here, these are these plastic tubes here are for running cooling water. Everything gets pretty hot in here. Um, the filament connections are right here and there's cooling water running through this tubing into the filaments. These are the copper bars that connect to the filaments inside. <coughs> and the filament is made out of um, tantalum. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, I believe it gives up its electrons easily. That's where the electrons come from to make the charged particles. And then it runs down and through this tray and into the back here. And what we've got back here is, uh, down here are two high-powered power supplies. You can see the two thick cables going into the upper power supply. That supplies the 400 amps for the filament. Just below that is another power supply that's 50 amps, 200 volts, and it provides the current for the arc. Um, inside this can that I just showed you, uh, an arc is created. That, that's what breaks apart the, uh, the hydrogen atoms. Just above here are some more power supplies, which are probably hard to see in the darkness here. And they're providing the high voltage for the, the lenses, the copper uh, lenses that I showed you. That, are, uh, that have the hole in the middle that the particles come out of. So this is the inside of the cage. There's another door on this side. There's the back wall. So I'll walk out the cage here. Now there's a safety interlock, which I had to take, put the camera down to get it to work. But that locks the door. This is an electric lock here. You have an emergency stop button that you have to pull out. And when you hit that button, it turns off all the high voltage. Um, everything that I showed you in the cage, inside here, that tray and the can, the ion source, is biased to something like 25,000 volts. And over here is the control system for this part of it. 
So this is the front side of the two power supplies, the PLCs that control them, and then the higher voltage power supplies at the top here. It's interesting because this rack here, that's all of this equipment is um, sitting in. If I go down to the bottom of the rack, you can see that it's sitting on these insulators. This whole rack here with all the power supplies and the PLCs is biased to up to 30,000 volts. So that's why it's sitting on these insulators. The rest of the rack here is sitting at ground potential. And below all of this, which is hard to see behind the sign here, but this red object is an isolation transformer. So we get uh, 400 volts three phase coming into here. And then uh, you get 400 volts three phase coming out of the transformer but you can have the two sec the primary and the secondary the transformer isolated by up to 40,000 volts so that allows us to bring in power into this rack down here at the bottom at the ground potential and then have the power coming into this rack here which is sitting at your 30,000 volts this is the cable here that uh, provides power to the rack and then there's a it's got its own set of circuit breakers here as well and because of the voltage, uh, in order to communicate to this PLC from another PLC, the main PLC, we use fiber optic link. So this is a fiber optic cable. And I'll walk around to the other side here. This is the other side of the cage, another interlock here. There's a door on this side. And up here, this panel is the water manifold for all the cooling water. So the cooling water comes out of these individual lines where those valves are into the various components that it cools and then it returns through this manifold here at the bottom. And all the wires coming out of the connections of the manifold, that's for monitoring the flow of the water and the temperature of the water. And over here, against the wall, this is the pump that pumps the water through all of the uh, cooling systems. In here and the water runs into this heat exchanger here so to the left of the heat exchanger is the water that goes into the cooling system and then to the right here this is water that's just run around through a chiller outside the building that cools our cooling water and this cooling water that we run through all the equipment has to be deionized we don't want it to be conductive so uh, we have a reverse osmosis filter in this cabinet and then we pump water from it into this big container and this just is the reservoir for deionized water and we monitor the, the water and uh, when it becomes too conductive we have to change filters and uh, clean it up so over here cut the covers off in this rack this is the main rack that controls the other PLC's So this is the uh, gauge controller. We have to monitor the vacuum system. Down here are the two uh, turbo pump controllers. I'll show you the pumps in a minute. And down here are the PLCs. And our main PLC here. This one is plugged into a, a computer so we can monitor what's going on. And another power supply. And then two more high voltage power supplies and this bottom power supply here, this is the one that provides the 30,000 volts. And down in here is a box and inside is a big relay that shorts out the 30,000 volts whenever you open one of these doors. So protect any operators going inside so they don't get shocked by the, the high voltage. These gauges here just monitor the temperature and the conductivity of the water. control system is here in this rack in this PC and we'll go quickly around to this this is what's called a vacuum box this is where the ion source is connected to on the other side on the other side of this plate here's the ion source this is a, a cover plate that comes off and we can put a piece of test equipment here there's another one on the top the beam that comes out of the ion source gets intercepted by this and all of the beam goes into here and this is a device that we use for measuring how much power is in the beam. 
eventually there'll be more tubing coming out of here and it'll go into some more equipment but for now we just have to prove that the ion source works now what creates the vacuum are a system of four pumps we've got two pumps here on the floor and these will pump from atmosphere down to a certain level of vacuum and then bolted onto the vacuum box are these two circular pumps called turbo molecular pumps and they have a turbine inside that runs at 27,000 rpm and it scavenges any other air molecules that might be existing in the box so the vacuum level gets really low here there's hardly any uh, molecules inside the box in fact the only molecule that get in there is from the hydrogen gas that we introduce and then these pumps remove any excess gas that comes out so Try to stand back and get a wide angle view of this facility. That's it there. So this is what I've been working on for the last almost a year. And uh, my job here is just uh, commissioning it, getting it uh, wired up and uh, making sure everything works. So that was a quick look at this big project. It's been taking most of my time. And that's why I haven't been producing too many videos. So. Uh, Hope you like this quick little video. I hope it give you an idea of what's actually going on in here. And uh, keep watching. Next time I'll have another video. Maybe something more to do with this guy. But thanks for watching. Catch you another time. Bye for now.